So now we're done with an overview of the cards and having a look at what they physically look like. Now we're going to get together with my PC and my Gizmo 2 and we're going to give them a run um, for performance and see how well they perform both under Windows 10 on a powerful um, i7 8 core CPU and also on a uh, rather lowly in comparison Gizmo 2 which is running a dual core AMD CPU running at 1 gigahertz with only a gigabyte of RAM in it and uh, the the Gizmo 2 has the uh, M SATA ports on it which is why I'm using that for this test and my um, PC my main PC that I have in my lab here is the one that has the standard slim SATA connectors and they're hooked up to a 6 gigabit SATA controllers so there shouldn't be any bottleneck issues as far as the controller is concerned we had to focus on exactly what the drive itself is able to deliver to us so anyway with that let's get on and have a look at it what we're going to start with here is the two slim SATA modules are going to be plugged into a SATA cable with a power and data lines coming to it and this will get plugged into the uh, 6 gigabit eSATA port sorry 6 gigabit SATA port of my main PC. For the two M SATA cards we have, the 8 and the 16, they're going to get plugged into my Gizmo 2 card which has a M SATA socket on the bottom right here. So what will happen with these is they simply get um, plugged in as so and just a small screw to hold it in place and that's all there is to those. And for the uh, slim SATA cards we simply will drop them into the socket like this and plug it into the PC. Now normally in a proper installation you would mount this a lot more securely but we're just going to do a performance test here so this should be sufficient. Okay so I've just powered up with the 8 gigabyte Swiss memory card installed in one of my SATA sockets and you can see it showing up right here in the uh, this PC browser window is coming up straight away as Swiss memory 7.43 gigabytes available remember this has ECC error correction as well so if we go in here you can see this nice and empty I'm not going to bother trying to format it we'll just test it right out of the box so let's just pull up my um, performance testing software and uh, run a test all right so the program I've got here is a roadkill disk speed version 2.0 um, you can one of the nice things about it is really simple to use you just pick the drive you want to test whether it be the physical disk or the logical one and you basically set it to run and it will perform um, disk read tests at a set of different sizes from half a K incrementing right up to one megabyte block uh, it'll tell us the average access time the caching speed and the maximum read speed it doesn't do write testing, uh, it just does read testing. So if you remember from above, our Swiss memory card is on drive D. And so we'll select drive D and we'll just say begin test. And what it'll do is it'll go away and uh, calculate a couple of things first. So there's your cache speed of 133 megabytes per second. And now it's going to run through the various sizes starting off with a 512K block. Uh, as you can see, that's not very good for reading that. And I think what's dominating there is that the... Um, I.O. performance just getting through the interface layers is way in excess of the actual time spent reading from the disk so it highlights an artificial issue there which really isn't an issue. This disk should start coming into its own at around about a 4k block size. So we pretty much peaked out there now with 100 and we've gone up a little bit to 112 and I doubt that the last one's going to be much of an increase. So we're probably bottling out now on the controller. Yeah, that's gone up to about 114. So not a lot of an improvement on the last little bit. But you can see here right at the very beginning, it's actually starting off with about 3.41 megabytes per second for half K blocks, which is really uh, ridiculously slow. But as I said, it's not optimized for that and you'll be spending more time um, setting up for the read than you would actually be doing the read here whereas at the top the more of the speed is dominated by the actual data transfers than there is with the um, IO like getting set up with the IO accessing the disk and things like that so um, I think you can see here that we are actually meeting the requirements of the uh, of the drive of the specifications let's go and just pull up the data sheet and we'll have a quick look at what that is this is a Swiss bit data sheet uh, it's from Farnell's uh, data sheet library you can also download this straight from the Swissbit website for the Swim, Slim SATA SSD MO297A which is what we have we have the uh, 
8 gig one currently under test here and if we slide down um, some of the things we'll just have a quick look at as we go through um, interface standard 3 gig slash 1.5 gig compatible UDMA 6 supported PIO mode 4 these are all standard SATA kind of uh, interfaces it's using SLC NAND flash drives 8-bit um, error correction per sector uh, 5 volts plus or minus 10 percent supply 3.3 volt is an optional we went through all of these things before um, we're in the industrial temperature range for this and we've got a 8k device at the moment so let's just skip through here we've got a lot of information about how you can talk to the uh, smart devices um, memory organization and things like that so we just slide down here um, product specification here we go so here's the uh, system performance metrics so for 128k block size so this, the lowest one they're actually specifying here well the first one is se sequential read um, of 128k block size for a 8 gigabyte card is about 110 megabytes per second maxing out at about 120 and for 128k what we got was we got 109.17 uh, so that's pretty close to 110 and we got for random reads we've got 99.56 that's 109 and 99.56 so all we have here is um, it's the same random reads with a 4k block size and you can see here even on their own system performance figures from Swissbit they say that from a random read 4k block for the 8 gig card is only going to be about 11 megabytes per second and if we look at what we were actually achieving with the 4k blocks for linear read was 22 and for random read we're actually about 12.65 so we're actually slightly higher um, than what it specifies here which is good it means that we're showing that the card is easily meeting its published specifications at least for the pieces that I can test right now for the 128k let's go back to that just for a second we've got the sequential linear read and the random read and the sequential linear read here is 110 and we were 109 so that's pretty much spot on um, there is no random 128k block size for reading being specified here now if you want to use this as a data logger um, you're going to be writing very small blocks typically so you're going to end up using the caching performance of the drive which as you can see up here the cache speed is about 133 megabytes per second so that's at the uh, you know is in excess of this the performance of this and if you look at the um, SATA controller interface that we were looking at the uh, earlier in the video uh, the controller itself is only capable of um, I think about 120 megabytes or something let's just quickly go and bring up that data sheet and have a look at that too so this is the SM2242 um, data sheet and as you can see here uh, again the serial the actual serial interface supports one and a half and three gigabits per second um, but if you go down if we go down here to the actual SLC sustained read and write rates you can see the target performance for these is only 105 and 80 megabytes for the SLC memory which is what we have so considering that we're actually getting that on the larger block sizes um, you know I wouldn't expect to get a huge amount more to be honest um, if you know, there may be a small amount of caching improvement which we are seeing in our performance figures as you can see here 133 megabytes per second if we had um, you know if we were able to hook up an oscilloscope or something like that to the actual data lines I think you would probably see that the um, data reading and writing is probably coming out of the actual controller per block much much faster because the actual interface is able to support the one and a half gig and three gig a second transfer rates okay so I've taken a snapshot of the figures from that one now I'm going to switch the card out and put the 16 gigabyte version in and we'll be right back okay so now we have this sex the same title for the memory it's the same drive letter but now it's a 14.8 gigabyte instead of the uh, 7 point whatever it was that it was saying before so let's run the same benchmark figures and see what we get this time I'm going to put all these figures the I'm going to take a screenshot of each of these afterwards and um, we will compare them next to each other in the blog post so we can see what the figures are so this selected drive G we'll start this again
and we basically bottle out at about 93 megabytes per second here around the top few figures um, with the random read being a little bit behind um, actually sequential and random at the one megabyte is pretty much the same there's hardly anything in it but anyway um, let's just call that 90 megabytes per second for the linear reads at the top and if we bring back the data sheet and have a look at the uh, 16 gig part this time sorry wrong way all right so we've got the 128k block size 16 gig is um, 110 and 120 and what we got on our test is for 128 we've got about 89 so we're a little bit slower than um, I would have expected in this case and for the sustained 4k block read write for uh, sorry sequential read random read 4k block random read size uh, for 16 gig it was talking about 9 megabytes per second and we were getting um, for 4k random reads we're actually getting about 11 so we're actually exceeding the performance on the random reads of the uh, card here so that's um, quite nice to see uh, a little bit disappointed on the 128k block size sequential reading which should be according to this up in the 110 to 120 your mileage will vary depending on the software that you're running it on uh, and things like that and and to be honest this memory is not designed for massively high performance in a high-end desktop PC it's an industrial memory device it's designed for industrial use in things like programmer logic controllers automotive applications and things like that where it is more about the reliability uh, and the stability across wide temperature ranges and vibration and humidity and things like that than it is about how fast the thing can go because I would you know to be honest for my own use if I needed a reliable product in an industrial application um, as long as it was fast enough to do the job that I had in mind for it which would typically be data logging or uh, hosting the operating system for an embedded controller or something like that or a CNC kind of machine then that's what matters and and you know the what's even more paramount than that is that it will retain its memory it will be reliable um, and you know basically it, you put it in a harsh environment and it's going to survive and work you take any commercial off the shelf uh, regular RAM whether or SD cards and things like that and try and do the same and they'll probably fail quite miserably because of the um, you know they're not made to the same level and uh, standard of manufacturing as these are they're not burned in for um, extended periods of time to make sure that there's no um, you know Monday morning chips getting through and things like that so, to sort of like coin a common phrase these things are all burned in they're all tested thoroughly before they're released out in the market so when you get them you know you can put them into a product you know you can rely on it and you know that they're going to work for a long long time without any issues and I think that's what you're paying for when you buy a product like this not for necessarily having screamingly fast performance now having said that that does not mean that there are not um, Swiss bit memory devices that do have high performance they actually have full M2 compliant memory cards available they have SD cards micro SD cards um, main memory um, SODIMs etc etc uh, as well as your standard um, USB sticks uh, for different applications as well and all of these are available in industrial um, grade parts where you've got the minus 40 to plus 85 and things as well for the temperature range and the vibration etc etc so um, you know what we're looking at here is really um, a general purpose um, industrial grade memory device for things like data logging and control applications and things like that as I said 8 gig and 16 gig so um, anyway it uh, looks like we've got the same figures it's now finished so let's do something else with this to see if we can maybe check how fast the writing is so I don't have any benchmark write figures but what I do have is, have is a whole bunch of videos which I have been um, well taking videos like the one I'm doing right now in fact and so let's just try a uh, large file copy straight to the uh, slim SATA card and see how fast it goes and we'll compare that between the 8 and the 16 and also one of my other drives before we do that sorry I wanted to just quickly show you my C drive on my current system is a high-end my um, M2 Samsung card and it is screamingly fast and if I run the test on this one of the things that I found is it's so fast it doesn't even have time to update the um, columns properly it actually craps out I think probably because the uh, 
speed is faster than what this software expects because it is a few years old. And let's just run it on my C drive and you'll see what I mean. But let's let that run through and um, the random reads weren't updating very well. I think they were all updating on the first column. So you can see there with the one megabyte random read, it was getting 609 megabytes per second. And as you can see on the linear reads, um, it starts out at about, um, this, well, same bad performance on the low end with the half K blocks of about 10 megabytes per second. But rapidly, as you can see, as you get the bigger and bigger block sizes, it goes up to one gigabyte a second. So uh, what I'm going to use is this drive as the source for my big multi-gigabyte file copy because you're not going to see any bottlenecks coming out of this for these big files. Um, just as a comparison, what I'm going to do is my uh, Z drive is actually a single SATA connected uh, standard 7200 RPM 2 terabyte hard drive. So I'm just going to put that in there and run a test on that, just so you can see what a regular hard drive would actually be like. So there you have it. Um, this still managed to get about the same speed at the peak as the 16 gigabyte uh, solid state disk for the linear read, which can be expected even for a standard spinning SATA disk because once you've actually um, seek to the required track and you start reading, it's down to how fast the disk is spinning and you know, in a linear mode, but even if you're skipping between two tracks, it can be very, very quick. Um, to move from one track to another. If you have to, obviously if it has to move a larger distance, that's going to take time as is shown up here with the 15.2 milliseconds. But if it's only moving a short distance, as in one track, is very, very little effect on the overall throughput performance. But if you look at the random read where it could be jumping all over the disk, you can see this has been repeatedly poor performance down to as little as um, 32 kilobytes per second, which is like insanely slow. Um, and even at the top end, it only managed to get to about 27 megabytes per second um, when it was reading one megabyte block. So pretty pitiful for the randomness. And that's because you have to physically move these heads all over the disk, as opposed to the solid state drives, which you were looking at a moment ago from Swissbit, where the performance was right up there, especially at the high end, as the linear and the, and the uh, random were about both sitting at about 90 odd megabytes per second. So that just shows it's one of the benefits of having the solid state disk is your random performance goes up through the roof compared to a physically spinning disk. All right, so that's enough of the uh, benchmark figures. Let's uh, pull up the um, disk space tests and we'll, sorry, the performance tests. So let's go in here. We'll go to my um, V drive is where all my videos are. So let's just pull up a file or two from here. Okay, so I'm just transferring some files from my V drive onto my C drive. The V drive is just a pair of um, mirrored spinning um, regular disks, two terabyte, sorry, three terabyte drives each, but they're mirrored for reliability, not for capacity. So um, they're only sustaining about five, uh, sorry, 52 megabytes per second transfer rate onto my C drive. The C drive is a solid state M2. Uh, it's not SATA, it's PCI Express four lane uh, controller card. And as you saw, uh, it can get up to a gigabyte per second transfer rates when it gets going. So I'm going to use that as the source to copy onto the uh, Swissbit cards. That way the only bottleneck will be the interface, the SATA interface to the Swissbit uh, controllers. So that's going to take a minute to finish copying. So let's just come back in a second. Okay, that's completed. We've got 7.42 gigabytes, which will pretty much fit um, onto either disk. So what we have on the left is my uh, C drive for my um, main computer. It's my high performance disk where I do all my rendering and things like that as well. And on the right hand side is the Swiss bit memory one. Now currently, as I said, we've got the 16 gigabyte card in here. So if we just take these, car these um, files now and I'm just going to drag and drop them straight onto the Swiss bit and we'll see how quickly it transfers them. So this is starting off at, well, it started off way up at the um, gigabits per second rate, which is probably cashing out into RAM um, 
from the primary drive and now it's gone down to um, sort of an ugly 40 50 megabytes per second sustained writing now these are massive files these are not the kind of thing that would normally be uh, done with the SATA drives you know you would normally for this kind of application you'd be having smaller um, write blocks but this is just the worst case kind of transfers that you could do I don't know if I have any tiny files somewhere that maybe we can use as a transfer medium as well to see what I can find but right now this is the the top end of the scale where we're transferring these huge files and it's still actually maintaining a fairly decent rate it's doing about 60 63 megabytes per second which is equally as fast as the um, the standard large spinning hard drive was doing and, and you know if you remember how the solid state disks work with these NAND flash is when you're writing um, they will basically have to write a 4k chunk at a time in pages uh, and then reallocate the next block and write it and go to the next block and write it um, it can't write less than 4k at a time and then if it comes across an area that's been used before this is with the wear leveling and things like that it actually has to go in and erase 256 kilobytes at a time before it can actually start writing the 4k block chunks again and when you're doing that the way we're doing you know which is basically what we're forcing this to do right now it is going to get quite slow because of all that time spending spent erasing the uh, next block ready for writing it back to it and I have done these tests before so these blocks have been used even though they've just been deleted of course you know with any hard drive when you just do a regular delete it really doesn't just delete them it leaves them um, with just the directory structure uh, flagged as being deleted so we're still even after this we're still sustaining 38 39 megabytes per second we're about 85 uh, percent done um, we've got about 20 seconds left to go with this so it's coming back up there a little bit Obviously, background processes and things like that will have some kind of impact on this. So there you have it. That's actually not too bad a complete transfer. We've, you know, we just piled across there um, 7.42 gigabytes of files um, in a matter of just a couple of minutes. So that's not too bad at all. Now, if I take these off of my C drive. If I just delete them here now we know from the performance figures that reading from these Swiss memory cards um, well any that's based on this technology and writing is a very very different thing so if we start transferring it back again we should see way way faster figures than what we did before so let's just give it a go so we're at 1.5 we're over a gigabyte there now we've only just come a little bit less we're still up to 300 to so we're almost actually done um, the speed that that stuff started coming back out of that is quite remarkable. We're still up at about 93, 94 megabytes per second. So we're actually, even though we've got these massive files, um, we're actually pretty much meeting the same benchmark figures that we were getting when we were running the uh, benchmarking software. So there you go. That's the 16 gigabyte card. All right. So let's just put the 8 gig back in and see what that can do for us. Okay, so let's not waste any time. Here's the 8 gigabit card. We've got 7.4 gigabits of uh, drives, files. So let's just drop them in and see how fast this one goes. So again, started off at about a gigabit a second, which is probably reading off of the primary drive and dumping it into cache. Uh, and as you can see, there's a rapid tail off after a little bit, dropping down to the now normal sustained write rate. Um, so you can see now this is running at about the same kind of speed, maybe slightly faster. I think the other one was running at about 30 megabytes per second around this time, which is where we are, well, we're now here. But um, we're still sitting there at a reasonable rate, 28, 29 megabytes per second. So we'll let that run through. It's going to take about 2 minutes and 30 seconds to run. So I'm just going to pause the, pause the video and we'll come back when it's nearly done. As we're near the end of this uh, run now, you can see that we are achieving about 64 megabytes a second, which the other dr disk was only in the uh, 50s and 40s. So as you can see, this one is a little bit faster with the writing with the uh, smaller size. All right, so that's that. Now let's just do a quick return trip and see how well that works. So I'm just gonna delete the files off of the uh, C drive, take all of these and dump them right back again and just drop them and see how fast that goes back again. It's still managing to transfer these files very, very quickly from the uh, 
solid state Swiss bit memory out back to the C drive. So that shows you that the read performance of these is actually pretty good. And there it is done. Next thing we're going to have a look at now is um, the M SATA cards. Now for this we need to go to a different computer. Now again you have to remember this is uh, an Ubuntu system and we're booting off the uh, Swiss bit memory card for the operating system because I've only got one memory drive slot in this controller so um, we're going to be able to do read performance checks on it but we're not going to be able to do the right ones because it wants to unmount the drive and remount it and things and that's not going to happen if it's the primary drive so we're just going to run the standard HD Palm that comes with Ubuntu and we're going to see what it gives us let's just zoom into that field uh, sorry that form so you can see the results when I run them all right so we're running HD Palm dash TD and on dev SDA which is the standard and there we have it. So a little bit different here now this time. One of the things that um, Unix is often quite much, uh, quite better performing than uh, Windows is um, sort of like very short, quick IOs and things like that. There's a lot less um, software-based infrastructure between your actual commands and the hardware. And you can see here that the caching hard disk reads um, is actually is getting about uh, 1.8 gigabytes per second um, in two seconds and it works out at about 943 megabytes a second read rate so that's allowing for some caching things like that which is a lot better than what the uh, Windows equivalent was doing now when we go to the um, buffered disk read 320 megabytes being read um, took 3.02 seconds and it actually managed to do that at 106 megabytes per second which basically ties in pretty much exactly with what we were getting within a few percent of the Windows 10 system that was getting it so that's actually pretty good um, 106 megabytes per second we were getting about 109 under Windows 10 on my power horse system now you gotta remember this gizmo 2 is also only a dual core um, AMD embedded um, SOC processor on here so it's not exactly optimized it's not running anywhere near as fast as the Windows system that I was testing the slim slatter controllers on so the fact that we're getting almost the same figures is uh, very impressive for the uh, Swiss bit cards because they're obviously showing us that um, they're you know they're working very very well up to performance uh, irrespective of the operating system and CPUs that are being connected to it so let's see if we can uh, power up the 16 gigabyte one all right, so let's just try booting this up. I think it's Windows 10 that's actually installed on here, and I haven't booted it up for a long, long time. And as you saw, with the exact same system, we were running um, Ubuntu. So this is going to be a cold start for Windows 10. Um, I've just plugged the power in. I'm just about to hit the power switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. So that took about a minute to boot up there. Um, probably be much, much quicker if it was doing it from standby. That was doing it from a cold boot. It's still not bad considering it's only a one megahertz, sorry, one gigahertz dual core CPU with a very limited amount of RAM. So let's log into here. So this is, as I said, is Windows 10. It's running on a 16 gigabit, 16 gigabyte um, Swiss bit memory card. As we know, it'll sustain 100 to 110 megabytes per second read rate, um, even though the write speed is much, much lower. All right, one quick copy later. We have disk speed up on here as well. Let's just run as administrator so we can see all the drives that may be available to us. Here we go, logical drive C. So we picked it. Let's just do begin the test and we'll see how well this manages to work. Now we are very resource constrained on this PC. Remember what I said, it's only a dual core AMD running at two, um, sorry, two core running at one gig Hertz and it's got a 16 gig of memory in total which means that it's going to be quite full anyway um, I haven't checked how much free space there is but I doubt there's very much there at all remember with this card on the uh, Windows PC we were getting about 99 98 megabytes per second once we got up to around about 128 256 K byte uh, blocks
So yeah, we're getting 81 to 86, so we're about 10%, 10, 11% slower. But if you consider that the Windows machine is running an 8-core plus hyper-threading, uh, it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, and all of the cores are running at 3 gigahertz, and in this case, we're running a system which has, um, I think, not a lot of resources. Let's have a look at what resources it actually has, in fact. We've got a AMD processor running at 1 gigahertz. We have 753 megabytes of RAM, so it's probably got 1 gig of RAM, but some of that's being shared with the video, I would imagine. Um, running full 64K bit operating, sorry, 64 bit operating system. And if we look at the disk, I bet you there's not a lot of space left on it either right now. Uh, yeah, we've got 1.1 gigabyte free out of 14.5 gigabytes. So it's actually quite impressive that we're actually even managing to run Windows 10 on here. What's even more impressive is that even though this is such a resource constrained um, system, we're still able to get uh, most of the figures out of the speed test as we were getting in the Windows system. We're a little bit slower than what we had in the Windows system, but I think it's nothing untoward that you'd be worried about. Now, you know, these figures, they may not look impressive compared to, say, the Samsung drive that I'm using on my primary system for its main C drive. Uh, you know, that thing can get up to uh, in excess of a gigabyte per second, whereas we're not even a tenth of the speed for this uh, these Swiss bit memory cards, but remember the purpose of these is for industrial control solutions and harsh environments. They're not about um, performance. I mean, if you tried to run one of these things, even at, at its fastest speed capability, where you know we seem to be getting about 110 megabytes per second. If you think about that, if you've got 16 gigabytes, 110 megabytes per second in um, basically 10 seconds, you're going to have filled up a gig. So in 16, uh, sorry, 160 seconds, which is not much more than a few minutes, you're going to fill that 16 gigabytes or the 8 gigabytes uh, very, very quickly. So if you're using it and you're relying on write speed um, at the kind of capabilities that this drive has, then you're clearly using the wrong kind of drives. Because the biggest one you can get here is 64 gig in this particular format. So it's not designed here for uh, high volume, high performance writing. It's designed for reliability for data logging applications where you have little bits of data that you're writing often to a drive and what you want to be able to do is pull that drive out uh, potentially, put it into a reader, suck all the data out of it very very quickly um, ret and return it back to operation so that it can start logging again. And more importantly what you want it to be is reliable over this large operating temperature range of minus 40 degrees centigrade and to be able to tolerate the humidities and uh, vibration and things like that that you could potentially get either in an outdoors environment of, with automotive or airplane or something like that or in an industrial environment where you may have high humidity uh, you know in some control plant you may have chemical um, corrosive uh, atmospheres and things like that and you want to have conformance coded memory cards and, and a PC module that has no moving parts in it and things like that where you can run this thing and you can run it for years reliably and be able to trust it. Come along once every now and again pull out the memory card, transfer all your log data off of the card and then plug it back in again and keep on going. Or alternatively you know you'd load up your um, operating system onto this thing and you plug it in there and then you just don't come back and visit it for a number of years. You know, you may be remote accessing it um, and you set the uh, memory using the option of having a read-only switch on it so that it will never write to the disk and it's just going to be able to be sitting there read-only mode and being able to be relied upon year in year out without any issues and as you can see the read performance is actually quite impressive considering these cards and if you're running something like a flavor of Linux and even here you know we've got Windows 10 and this is not any particular um, IOT based version this is actually the full blown uh, version of Windows 10 and it can still squeeze into the 16 gigabyte card. Obviously if you have a 32 gigabyte card then you're going to be able to run a Windows 10 environment, any Windows 10 basic application that you would want to run and still have space for data logging and things like that. 
Um, in this particular case, obviously not an ideal use for it because it still would be slow on a PC like the Gizmo 2. But if you were using the Windows IoT, which is things like that's available for um, the Raspberry Pi and other devices, then uh, it will run quite happily, give you lots of capabilities, um, give you reliable drive performance and availability and keep you running for years even in the most harsh environments so anyway um, I hope you like this review I'm it's very particular to the Swiss bit industrial control memory cards of the 8 and 16 gigabyte variety um, they're not necessarily impressive by desktop PC based standards but as I said they're not supposed to be uh, what's impressive about these cards is the manufacturing quality uh, the fact that they're burned in before they're even shipped out to the consumer uh, they're gold plated edge connectors they're high reliability um, and they have you know vibration resistant their industrial temperature ranges and they're just something that you can rely on where you can put it into an industrial application or some kind of automotive app or aircraft or something like that and you can just rely on the fact that it's going to work right out of the gate having a standard and approved bill of materials having all of the QA testing and everything else that's done to it before you even see it in your hands from a shipper um, and being able to just put it into your industrial control application or rely on the fact that it's going to work that is what is important for a device like this not the fact that it's going to be blazed amazingly fast or something um, you know reliability and availability tops performance in this kind of situation every time uh, anyway hope you like the review and uh, we'll come back with more as I get devices to play with and evaluate